strangles. Um, so what, what actually is strangles? Uh, it's a severe um, bacterial infection of the upper respiratory tract in horses and uh, the associated lymph nodes, the lymph nodes that drain the upper respiratory tract. It's a disease that's been recognised for centuries. Uh, it's effectively a global disease which largely reflects the, the contagious nature of strangles uh, and, and also reflects the, the mobile horse population due to regular movements between premises within a country and even between countries. It's caused by a bacteria named Streptococcus equi, subspecies equi. For the remainder of this talk, we'll refer to it as strep equi uh, in the interest of time. Um, and unlike its close cousin, um, which is named strep equi subspecies zoepidemicus, um, strep equi is not normal inhabitant of the equine respiratory tract, so it shouldn't really be there. And when it is there, it, it tends to cause a problem. So why is strangles a concern? Well, it's got a high morbidity. Um, it's a concern because of the, the severity of disease in many cases. Um, it has a significant mortality, um, not as high as perhaps other conditions that we see, but certainly there are several reports in the literature of horses dying from this disease. Um, it has a prolonged clinical course and a prolonged recovery period. Um, and, and this obviously has an economic impact as well. And then also the potential complications that might occur in, in thankfully, the minority of cases uh, after contracting strangles is a concern as well. But I'd say one of the biggest concerns is the carrier status that we'll talk a, a little bit more about in a second. The mode of transmission is really direct from horse to horse uh, or indirectly via what we call fomite, so shared utensils, buckets, um, you know, personnel, clothing, that kind of thing. So the risk of a horse developing strangles is largely dependent on the propensity for exposure to either clinical cases or horses that are carrying the bacteria. And this level of risk is, is largely related to how close the population of horses is and what is the level of travel from a particular premises and mixing with other horses. So the course of events um, with strangles is after exposure, um, the bacteria attaches onto the pharynx, the back of the throat. Uh, at this point, the horse has a, a throat infection. However, it quickly invades through the lining of the, the pharynx and, and very quickly reaches the lymph nodes that drain that area. And due to the bacteria's ability to evade the efforts, if you like, of the horse's immune system to clear them, they, they divide rapidly and um, form abscesses within those lymph nodes. And these abscesses can either rupture externally or internally, and when internally, generally into the guttural pouches, which are little cavities, one on the left and one on the right, which lie either side of the pharynx. And when the abscesses rupture into the guttural pouches, they then discharge pus into this cavity, which, in light of the poor drainage of the pouch, can remain there as a, a source of infection to other horses. And over time, this pus will change in consistency. It becomes more cheese-like, a term we use as caseous, uh, and then ultimately forming individual little rubbery structures which remain in the pouch until these are manually removed, either through an endoscope or, or surgically removed. So the optimal time to encourage drainage from the guttural pouch is really early in the disease process when the, the pus is of a, a liquid consistency, and this can be encouraged by feeding the horse from the, from the ground. So considering that course of events, the clinical signs associated with strangles are pretty much as follows, um, with an incubation period being around, well, up to 14 days, although it may be longer in, in a small number of cases. So initially the horse will become dull and off its feed, and this is largely down to the inflammation at the back of the throat, but also due to the fever that the horse will develop early on in the disease process. Uh, indeed, detecting a fever is one of the earliest means by which cases can be detected and it's a useful thing to do in the face of an outbreak. Um, following that initial stage, the horse will generally begin to discharge pus down both nostrils. Uh, and again, this is reflecting inflammation at the back of the throat. Um, but this discharge of pus can also be seen at a later stage in the disease when those lymph node abscesses have drained into the guttural pouch and the guttural pouch is intermittently um, emptying into the into the pharynx and down the 
down the nose. And then after around two or three days following the initial illness, um, one can appreciate the, the lymph node starting to enlarge either underneath the jaw or behind the jaw on either side, and this can be appreciated. It's worth noting um, that there's an increasing recognition of a milder form of strangles. We term this atypical strangles, which fails to present with the same level of severity as the typical cases. And although this is clearly better for the horse, it, it can be problematic as these cases can go undetected yet pose the same level of threat to other horses uh, as the, the more typical um, form of the disease will do. So as the disease runs its course, there are, I guess you could say, three potential outcomes. Either the case will self and fully resolve, or the case will resolve clinically. However, the horse will remain a carrier because of the presence of residual pus and bacteria within the guttural pouch. Or more rarely, thankfully, the case um, may develop secondary complications. And, and like I say, that, that's, that's a rarity. Although clinical signs are generally typical, um, diagnostic confirmation is often indicated, at least in the, the initial few cases, to determine you know, the need to implement appropriate disease containment measures within the yard. So we kind of need to know that that's what we're dealing with. And that diagnostic confirmation really relies on the detection of bacteria from the back of the throat or from the guttural pouch, depending on the stage of disease that we obtain our samples. Or it might depend on the detection of an increase in what you could call anti-strep equi antibody levels in the horse's blood over the course of the disease. This is a, a, what we term serology. And these diagnostic methods are also employed to detect carrier horses, although the sensitivity of serology in detecting particularly long-term carriers is, is questionable. A preferred method really is to take samples directly from the cultural pouch, although this is considerably more invasive and expensive. Um, and the bacteria can be detected via culture um, or through the identification of bacterial DNA. This is a, a methodology we term PCR, and that's considerably more sensitive than culture, and the result is generally more quickly available. What about the treatment of cases? Well, it's largely supportive. Drugs can be given to reduce fever and improve the appetite and demeanour of the case. Um, feeds can be prepared to a soft consistency to facilitate swallowing. Um, nasal discharges and draining abscesses can be regularly cleaned. Um, the use of antibiotics is somewhat controversial as, as their use in a case with lymph node abscessation can delay maturation and rupture and ultimately draining of those abscesses. So it might just effectively be pressing the pause button for a short period of time. Considering the welfare and economic impact of strangles, then prevention of the disease is a considerably more attractive option compared with the cost and the movement restrictions and the welfare implications associated with an outbreak on a yard. Um, infectious disease prevention can be regarded really as having two main components, namely robust biosecurity measures and measures aimed at reducing the susceptibility or you could say increasing the resistance of uh, to infection in, in the host, in this case the horse. So biosecurity measures are based really on an appreciation of the modes of transmission of the disease from horse to horse, both direct and indirect, with efforts to minimise um, and at best avoid direct and indirect exposure of horses to clinical cases and to carrier horses. Efforts should be made to minimise disease introduction onto the yard in the first place, so an adequate period of quarantine for any new arrivals is good practice with additional efforts to confirm that these new arrivals, assuming that they are symptom free, are not potential strangles carriers. Inevitably, horses to varying degrees will move on and off yards, for example, to compete. And under such circumstances, the, the sharing of tack, and utensils and feed and water buckets, etc. really should be avoided, both at the event and, and actually even within the yard in which the horse resides if possible. If a case does occur on a premises, then strict movement control should really be implemented and the horses should be divided into groups depending on their clinical status. And for example, a good way of, of detecting that early on would be a high rectal temperature. And their status with regard to recent contact with clinical cases um, should determine where they, which groups they fall into. So the in-contact group should be monitored daily, preferably twice daily, you know, with the rectal temperatures being taken to allow the early detection 
of those cases as clinical cases and therefore the early transfer into the clinical case group before they begin to shed the bacteria. So that's an important thing to do in the face of an outbreak to minimise spread within the, the yard. Um, currently, um, there is a new vaccine that's available, which has been shown to significantly reduce disease severity um, and also the risk of development of lin lymph node abscesses and also subsequently bacterial shedding as well. And although it's not 100% protective, like a lot of vaccines, and also like all strategies aimed at reducing disease prevalence, there is good evidence that, that vaccination when combined with, not instead of, uh, appropriate biosecurity measures has the potential to positively impart a greater level of protection amongst the, the general horse population. So hopefully that's been a, a brief but an informative um, overview of the disease that we know as strangles.